All right, so now we're at the next steps. Planning, uh, Zika planning and response. Here, Don, I'm gonna throw them. Oh, terrible throw. And what we're gonna ask you to do, we've got an audience response survey. So this is what the remotes are going to do. And we're gonna ask you questions and we want honest feedback. And you're gonna get to see the feedback on the screen as we vote. So every time we'll give everybody a little bit of time. What it will do is it will register your last vote. So you can push multiple buttons. The last one you push is what it's going to register when I close. I will give you pre-warning. So when we open it up, when I go to the, the slide, I'll read the question. Once the slide is up and the question is up, you can go ahead and answer it right away. I will let you know before I close it, and then it will close and it will show you what the response is, okay? So again, your last answer you press, you can press multiple, but it will only register the last one, all right? Okay, so we're gonna do a test question. This poll is open. Um, we want to know, what is your favorite color? Is it blue, pink, yellow, or red? So, I don't see the poll, so I'm going to go to the next one. The responses are up? Okay, so we have 134 people who have voted. 136. I'll give you about 10 more seconds, then I'm going to close this poll. All right, I'm going to close it. All right, the majority are blue, 61%, um, pink, and then red, and then yellow. All right, so it looks like it's working okay. Are you guys ready to get started and provide us with some feedback? So really what we're looking to do now is identify if we have any gaps, if you guys thought things went well, if we're missing partners or communication opportunities. Those are the types of pieces of information we want to know. So. Number one, what is your level of understanding of Zika virus after attending this summit? Do you think you have a high level of understanding, a moderate level, or a low level of understanding? All right, oh, lots of numbers coming up. All right, 10 more seconds. If you're still thinking about it, hit a button. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. So 71% said that they have a high level of understanding. About 30% said that they have a moderate, and it's good that we don't have anybody who said low. Otherwise, <laughs> we'd probably have to reconsider our, our agenda. All right. In what area did your Zika virus knowledge most increase after attending this summit? Was it human surveillance, mosquito surveillance, mosquito control, communication with the public, communication with patients, or on testing for Zika virus? So we'll give everybody a minute. And we're actually going to take this information and use this for feedback on developing our messaging, developing our resources, moving forward. All right, I'll give you 10 more seconds. We've got about 129. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close. So. The highest um, was Zika virus testing, followed by human surveillance. Did multiple people have multiple things that they felt, or did most people feel it was like one? Oh, so that was hard to decide? OK, good. So there's some more feedback. OK, how confident are you that you have a role in Zika virus prevention and response in Arizona? And the options are, I definitely have a role. I may have a role, depending on the scenario. I don't have a role, or I'm not sure whether or not I have a role. All right. I'm one of those that always marks. I'm not sure. All right. I'm going to go ahead and close it in 10 seconds. All right. And the majority feel that they definitely have a role, followed by I may have a role, but it depends on the scenario. Um, and then we do have a couple I don't have a role or I'm not sure. What? Yes. <laughs> All right. 
Do you have a better understanding of your role in Zika virus prevention and response after attending this summit? And this is a yes, no. We don't give you an I don't know. <laughs> Numbers are going up. All right, and can you see why we're not letting DHS people do it? Because if they put no, they don't know their role in Zika prevention. <laughs> Might need to move them. Um, all right, I'm going to close the poll in 10 seconds. All right. So we've got 88% who said yes and about 12% who said no. So we'll give some time for people to give um, some feedback um, in a little bit on if you feel that there are gaps um, that remain on that. So with the next series of questions, we're, gonna, we're interested in understanding what gaps you feel still exist in Arizona, um, things that we can work on um, regarding Zika virus prevention and response. So think about it in that frame. What are we missing? Do you think human surveillance is a current gap in Arizona's Zika virus prevention and response efforts? Yes, no, or unsure? All right, 10 more seconds. I'm noticing that we, we get to about 139. So, closing. So, 35% said yes, there is a gap in um, Zika virus prevention and response in human surveillance. 40% said no, they didn't feel it was still a gap. So we will have to round back and get some um, feedback on that. Do you want to do that after this? Okay. So what we'll do is after, we have scribes actually in the audience. We have plants. Um, <laughs> And so what we want to do is if you voted yes and you're okay coming to a microphone and letting us know where you think that gap is, um, we, would, we would love to hear it so that we can work on improving that and getting the gap. I'm looking at Ingrid. I see people making eyes at Ingrid. No? Or you can always provide it to us in email as well. We're happy to take the feedback, especially since, you know, if you're like me, you don't like getting up in front of people. Yeah. Um, I can just speak for us. I'm Mayor Schumacher from Coconino County. I'm an epidemiologist. Um, I said that, yes, there's a gap, but I don't think it's so much in our knowledge as in um, we're expecting there'll be quite a volume after a while. So the gap is really having the resources to do it all and having enough people trained. So I just wanted to clarify that's oh, what that's it is. That's a perfect point. Thanks, Mayor. So yes, looking at the resources, especially if we're expecting an influx after summer vacation or after the Olympics, do we have the resources to be able to respond to every single suspect or probable case and follow up? Any other feedback? I see somebody getting up. I'm Ralph Jones, uh, Gila River Indian Community Environmental Health. Um, from the uh, information we got today, the cross reactivity of uh, like yellow fever, um, I think that's a maybe a, a biotech gap okay. um, that that would uh, limit our with um, human surveillance. That's a really good point. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jessica White, epidemiologist at Maricopa County. Um, I would say the gap is that there's only one in five with symptoms, and so there's four people that were missing. Absolutely. So i trying to identify those cases that may be infected that don't even know that they are infected, and how do we get the appropriate wraparound public health services on that? Yes, that is definitely a gap. All right. Are you okay with that, Jessica? Jessica's taken down all the, all the information. All right, we'll move on to the next one. And we really do, we do want the feedback, so please feel free to, to let us know. Okay, do you think mosquito surveillance is a current gap in Arizona's Zika virus prevention and response efforts? Yes, no, or unsure? All right, I'll give about 10 more seconds. All 
right, I'm going to go ahead and close. 48%, so almost half said no. 39% said yes, it was still a gap, and 13% are unsure. Does anyone who said yes, no, or unsure have any like specific feedback they'd like us to address moving forward? Yeah, how do you get rid of the cockroach of mosquitoes, right? All right. And again, you can always provide feedback to us um, at any point. Do you think mosquito control is a current gap in Arizona's Zika virus prevention and response efforts? So yes, no, or unsure? I don't know. It, it, I am one of those mosquito magnets, so it doesn't matter what I use. I have bites all over me all the time. And so I have mosquito control issues in my house. And my five-year-old takes after me, so. All right, I'll give you about 10 more seconds. Looks like we're at the limit right now. I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. So 69% said yes, they felt mosquito control is a current gap in Arizona. 14% said no, and 17% said unsure. And mosquito control definitely is difficult. Does anybody who, um, who voted yes that they believe that it's a gap? Does anybody have any feedback or concerns they want to address? Uh, good afternoon, Kim James with uh, uh, Pima County. And I said yes to both B and C. One is, both of them are, are much related to resources, anything else, we just don't have the numbers to get out there and, and uh, surveil or to control once we find it. And the other side of the control piece is the ability to get in quickly Mm -hmm. to private property, especially our abandoned properties and other things out there. Okay, that's some really good feedback. Hi, uh, I'm Chris Remus with Pinal County, and I basically agree with exactly what he said, and also that we have large areas in Arizona that have no surveillance and probably don't have a response plan mm -hmm. as of yet. So I think that's where we could really ramp things up. Okay. Perfect, thank and you. And also, I think there's also a tendency, since we're all used to West Nile virus, a lot of those areas where there's not as much going on, there tends to be a response in line with West Nile, rather than people really thinking about the biology of 80s. Right, right. People are so used to dealing with West Nile around here that this is a new, a new mosquito. Hi, um, I'm Julie Pasquinelli. I work with Maricopa County Environmental Services, and I answered yes to mosquito control being a gap in the sense that maybe not what we are doing, but what the general public can do, and I don't think a lot of them still understand their role in preventing mosquitoes. Like, I, I do a lot of outreach, and I talk mm -hmm. to the people, and, and they're like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm like, I, I kind of have to turn it around and say, well, it's what you can do, right. what you can help with, and you need to take control of your yard or your plants or, you know, like, it's not just us. They, right. they have to do it. Like they mentioned with roof rats, it has to be everyone involved, all hands on deck. It's a community effort, not just us coming in and spraying. Absolutely. So in addition to potentially the mosquito control, a communication gap to let the general public know that everyone plays a role in mosquito control and abatement and, and what they can do on a personal level. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Chris Sumner with the Yuma County Pest Abatement District. Um, one of the glaring omissions that we have is field level basic research on the activity of the mosquito, how it's adapted to our desert climate, when its flight activity window is, so that we can intervene with area-wide treatments. We need to know when this mosquito is on the wing so that we can kill it. We need to know what its pesticide resistance profile is. We need bottle bioassay work done. And we need to know things like what its uh, daily attrition rate is and how far it will disperse, a mark release recapture study. These are all relatively small studies that could be funded and supervised by U of A entomologists and done out in the field. Without that, we can't really make the first step with effective vector control. That's okay. all I have. That's some really good feedback. All right, anything else? 
All right. We'll go on to 5D, which is, do you think communication with the public is a current gap in Arizona Zika virus prevention and response efforts? And we did hear about the, um, the need to educate the public on mosquito control and that they have a role in that. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, I'll give about 10 more seconds. So get your votes in. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close. So 80% said yes, that there are gaps in communication with the public about Arizona's Zika virus prevention and response. 12% said no, and 8% said unsure. And we did just hear the feedback about the communication for um, personal mosquito abatement and taking care of those types of areas in your yard. Are there any other specific communication gaps that, um, that we should mo work on moving forward to the general public? Yes, Brandy. Uh, so the abatement in your house, that's a good point. Um, I think I, I can identify a gap. I think one of them that we've really been trying to work on now is the need not only to protect yourself when you're traveling and you're in the place, but also for the, the time period after. I don't know that people know that just because you're no longer in that Zika impacted area that, that you shouldn't stop. You should keep, you need to protect our mosquitoes from getting Zika. So we've got to be better about getting that message out too. All right, any other feedback? All right, and 5E, do you think patient communication is a current gap in Arizona's Zika virus prevention and response efforts? And, and that's after we've just told you all day that there's all this stuff that we don't know about um, pregnancy. So I'm gonna bet that this is yes. I'm sorry, I, I went too soon. But yes, 63% um, felt, I didn't give you the warning, I'm sorry. Um, but 63% felt that um, patient communication is a current gap. Um, we would agree with that. Um, and is there any specific feedback that people are looking for patient communication or handouts to be developed or anything like that? Does anybody have any specific recommendations? No, we're good. Oh, perfect. So I'll just say that we talked in our breakout session about patient communication and how the media could play a bigger role in utilizing that to reach the community. Um, so we just felt that came up in our conversation. That's so. a really good point. So utilizing the media to kind of spread our messaging. Right to inform community and patients to maybe broach the subject with their providers if the providers aren't talking to them about it. And, yeah. and to get people, to, yeah, Holly, that's your job. <laughs> All right. Okay, and inclusion of key partners is an important part of Arizona's Zika virus prevention and response efforts. So the important question is, are there partners who you think have not been included in the planning? Yes, no, or unsure? And you know there's gonna be a follow-up question to this one for those that vote yes. All right, I'm gonna close it in 10 seconds. I'll give you the warning this time. All right, in closing. So 56% said yes, they felt that there were important partners who were not included in the planning. 20% said no, and 24% said unsure. Um, we actually have scribes in the audience, like I said. So if you could, if people could get up and let us know who are the important key partners that we need to include, because we wanna make sure that they are being included in future communications and that we're able to direct messaging to them. Yeah, perfect. 
Uh, my thought was just <clears throat> how about the patients and the citizens? Okay, perfect. Um, hi, Jose Ariola with uh, Santa Cruz County. Uh, for us, we've uh, tried to incorporate our federal partners down there, uh, Border Patrol, U.S. Customs, especially with the uh, migration aspect okay. of it, and we've actually recruited them and used them as uh, surveillance uh, areas. Okay. So we've uh, we set traps at, uh, at three of the stations in the county at the checkpoint, and we're currently working with uh, trying to get uh, CBP, uh, U.S. Customs, to, uh, to work with us. So oh, that would good. be good. Yes. And I'm back by assignment. <laughs> uh, uh, pharmacists. Pharmacists. Very good. And we're writing all of these down. A yes? Airlines. Airlines. We need to work, partner with our airlines. Perfect. OK. I'm with the Navy, so um, our DOD partners, uh, you have several military installations. Good point, yes. Okay, go ahead. Oh, Courtney. Um, I was going to say uh, social service and behavioral health agencies as well, especially social services and just thinking about some of the um, prevention and control measures we're asking around yards. There's folks that are homebound that have uh, people that are going out to see them and being able to add that into their um, the, the services that they're providing from an awareness level will be really beneficial. And then behavioral health, certainly with the anxiety that is brought about by this. Absolutely. Yes. We're trying to prevent the, the pregnancy, seeking pregnancy physicians. Oh, yes. So OBGYNs and maternal and fetal medicine specialists. Health plans. Family practice. Health plans. Who's that? Health, Health plans. plans. I'm from Access. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> So if you get the message out to the health plans, it gets down to the providers, it gets down to them. We need to have that, you know, no mixed messaging. We need to have a consistent message through the health plans, to the providers, to, our, to the members. And, and we're starting out with Medicaid, but you know it trickles down because all of the health plans, many of them have commercial plans, so we'll get it out through everyone. Yes. Okay. Very good. Um, yeah. I'm hissing. <laughs> um, the, so I was discussing this, and it's kind of hard to identify who that person is, but the people that we have the hardest time reaching are the well, the young, and the ones that are really knowing it all out there, and they're traveling. So it, they're using orbits and, and, and cheap air and all of these places. They're, they're the ones that could help us with those visual messages. When I'm booking a flight to go to the Olympics, it'll say, hey, remember, pack your mosquito stuff. And we could partner with them, but I'm not sure how to get my head around who that person is, but it's an avenue that we could use that could reach that group. Okay, perfect. Yeah, back on the vector side of the equation, um, there's a huge industry in Arizona, the private pest control operators that spray your yards for roaches and crickets and whatever. Mm -hmm. These guys are hungry for more business. Um, I think there's an opportunity for creating a special, oh, I don't know, a certificate or medal you can put on your, on your uh, customer information saying that you've been trained in 80s Egypti identification, control, remediation of breeding sites, as well as being a spray jockey. I think there's a huge number of people out there who can kill a lot more of these mosquitoes than most of us in this room can. We need to include them, I think. Yeah, that's a good point. Very good. Hi. Uh, I was at Home Depot the other day, and there is a huge insect repellent display and a lot of people that work outside, and I was wondering why there wasn't a huge Zika sign in front of it. So working with the actual people that sell the insect, yes, the insect that, repellent. Yes, that's a good point. I think you need to contact local law enforcement, because if this does get out of hand, you're going to need us. Very good, and we appreciate you being here. I was just going to piggyback on that uh, jails and prisons also, and your ICE facilities. Very good. Are you leaving? Oh, okay. <laughs> Any other groups? Because we're writing them down. Farmers? I have one. And agriculture? Okay. 
Um, yes. I think the people that are involved in linking climate and disease transmission modeling, like trying to make the computer models to forecast the uh, transmission risk, uh, they should totally be here. Okay. All right. Realtors and HOAs. Looking at our after school activities and programs out in the parks, doing events and activities, whether it's sports, baseball, football, all that. Very good. Thanks, Antonio. I think most of us here are county government. Why not in, uh, talking to all our city governments that are within that county to participate? Very good. Anything else? That's a pretty good list. But I'm sure we'll still find people that aren't on it. So if you think of things, let us know. Um, we're happy to um, continuously add to the list. The other thing that would help if you actually have contacts in, of people in those areas that actually can get the message out, that helps us too if you can email us. All right, so we're gonna ask you now. We asked you whether or not you thought that they were. Now we're gonna ask you, what do you think is Arizona's biggest gap in Zika virus pre preparedness? This one's a little harder. Because we did not give you an all of the above. Because that doesn't help us. All right, I'm going to give you 10 more seconds. All right. Oh, the numbers are still going. All right, I'm going to close it. It looks like the biggest gap is communication with the public. So Holly, you have some work to do. <laughs> Just teasing. Um, and then the next one looks like it's mosquito control. So, but all of them have been identified as people thinking that they're the most important gap. So that's good to know. All right, so we still have more. With the next series of questions, um, we want to know um, what resources you still need to address Zika virus. So again, we're gonna ask you, do you need more information about Zika virus prevention or response? Yes or no? Oh, this is going up a lot faster. All right, 10 seconds. <gasps> Poor Holly. All right, and I'm gonna close it. All right, 45% uh, said yes, they do need more information, and 55% said no. So those that need more information, any feedback? Yes? I think just because we're at the stage where there's a lot of I don't know and what we know right now, and um, I just think we're going to need more information as it becomes available, because uh, I don't think we know everything there is. That's a really good point, yes. And I th yes, we don't know everything about this virus yet. Anything else? Okay. I'm going to go to the next question. Do you need more funding for Zika virus prevention or response? <laughs> Teresa. All right, I'm gonna give you 10 more seconds. Looks like it's slowed down. And I'm closing. 86% of you said yes. All right. And 14% said no, I like those. Just kidding. Um, and we are working on bringing more Zika funding into the state um, and we'll continue to look for opportunities. Um, we do know we need more funding for mosquito control, for um, personnel resources, for testing, and for educational opportunities. All right, do you need more staffing for Zika virus prevention or response? Probably another one that's a big yes. And the numbers are climbing really, really fast because it's really easy to say yes. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds. And I'm closing. 68% said yes. So that's actually a little bit lower than the funding. 
And so, okay. So that's Jessica. <laughs> All right. And then what is your most important remaining need in order to prevent or respond to Zika virus? Is it information about Zika virus prevention or response, funding, or staffing? So out of the three, what do you need most? Go for B. No, I'm just kidding. All right, I'm gonna give you 10 more seconds. And if you have to leave, it's totally okay. The only thing we're gonna ask is please put your remote either back in the bag or in the middle of the table. Otherwise, we have to send Zika mosquitoes after you. All right, I'm gonna close, 10 seconds. And I'm gonna close. So 42% said uh, additional funding was their most important need, followed by more information, and then um, staffing. So it's good to know. And then what do you think is Arizona's top communication priority related to Zika virus? Is it community education about reduction of mosquito populations? Community education about mosquito bite prevention? Zika education for pregnant women or Zika education for the general public? And if it all comes important, we'll do it all. I'll give you 10 more seconds. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close. Ooh, wow. So 38% for community education about reduction in mosquito populations and Zika education for the general public ranked higher than um, education for mosquito bite prevention and um, pregnant women. Okay. And then what do you think is Arizona's top response priority related to Zika? Is it enhanced mosquito surveillance, enhanced mosquito control, or enhanced human surveillance and testing? All right, 10 more seconds. The numbers are getting lower and lower as you notice. And I'm gonna go ahead and close. 44% said the top response priority was enhanced mosquito control, followed by enhanced surve human surveillance and testing, and then enhanced mosquito surveillance. All right. And then how confident do you feel about Arizona's ability to respond to Zika virus? Extremely confident, confident, slightly confident. We didn't give a not very confident. <laughs> and then you've got not confident. It's either you're kind of confident or you're not at all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close it in 10 seconds. Get your answers in. And I'm closing. 61% said confident, followed by 19 that said extremely confident, 12 said not confident at all, and 9% said slightly confident. So we're weighing on the confidence side, so that's good. Um, all right. So now we're on to the closing remarks. We just want to say thank you for spending the day with us. And we really thank you for the responses and the feedback so that we can take next steps and move forward. Um, if you could put the remotes back into the bags on the table, we would appreciate it. Um, and we just really appreciate you guys spending the day with us today. So thank you for joining us.